Okay, so here we've got the uh, new Jet KVM keyboard video and monitor, mouse, whatever you want to call it, and um, I'm unboxing it here. And uh, it's an absolutely tiny device, absolutely fantastic, and I'm going to show you how this works. I've seen a few videos of these, and for any IT guys out there, you will absolutely love this device. It certainly weighs something. Um, so this is the unboxing, taking the cables out, and I'll the, the instructions here. Just got that there to go to a couple of things. Nobody reads that, I know I certainly didn't. And obviously the box here with the cables. Quite simple, HDMI to mini HDMI, a USB splitter, and here I am connecting it to one of the systems here. Uh, this is a um, just a, a system that we've got on the bench just to test things. Plugging in the USB-C, which is a splitter, and one of those you connect to the keyboard and mouse cable that comes with the thing. Here I am connecting the mini HDMI to the KVM, let's see on the back of that. And then what I have used, which doesn't include in the package, is a display port to HDMI adapter. And I've also got an HDMI splitter so I can at least see the screen and of course remotely access it from wherever. Get it the wrong way around first, so clip the video there. Quite straightforward really, put in the uh, HDMI splitter. Again, that does not come with the package. This is something I need bought additionally. And you also need a uh, power supply as well, just a USB-C or USB-A to C power supply for the KVM. And of course, the other end goes into the KVM. So like I say, regular HDMI to mini HDMI. And then this is for the keyboard and mouse, so you plug the other end of that, of course, into the spare USB-C of the splitter, and then into the PC. I've just got a regular USB-C power supply. What I did also discover when doing this though is that unless the machine, the computer is switched on, you won't see any display at all. So even if you've got power going to the KVM, if it's not connected to the machine or plugged in to the USB port, you will not see any display. So if you've hit that issue, that'll be why you've had a problem there. Okay, tiny little box, absolutely brilliant. You can sneak it behind any little box underneath your stairs or underneath your desk or something like that. It doesn't take up any room whatsoever. Plug in the network cable. And this is where I discovered at the time that it didn't uh, just power up and I was like, why is that? And it's because the machine itself wasn't switched on. So that's what I'll do in just a second. There we go. So that's now got its IP address. And then what we'll do, we'll go over to another machine just to uh, connect to that. As you can see here, I'm typing in the local IP. And then I'm gonna show you how to do this so you can access it remotely from anywhere. Jet KVM. Now, firstly, I've just set it up just to show this. I've hit no password. You can obviously add a password later on, of course, which I'll be doing. That's now fired up. And that's now logging in. Again, I've got this connected to a normal keyboard and mouse as well, but this is all being controlled from the my own keyboard and mouse at this machine. Showing you a couple of things there, just File Explorer, clicky. Was a little bit strange on the video to begin with, so I restarted it, it seemed to resolve the issues. So now I'm just gonna go straight into, just browse the web, just see if that's okay. As you can see, this is all from my web browser. Just BBC News, quick check. You can see the video issue there. It's a bit of a strange one. It seemed to resolve itself after a couple of minutes. So I went into the settings, just to have a poke around, see what the different settings are there. You can hide the mouse cursor, the remote mouse cursor, because I noticed there was a little bit of a lag there. Cracking little piece of kit though, uh, $69. I bought two of them. I reckon I may be buying a few more because these will be incredibly handy because you can access 
uh, obviously not just the remote via Windows, you can access the BIOS. Now what I'm doing now is I'm connecting this through my Google account and so therefore I'm just going to give the device a name, I'm just going to call it KVM1 for now. Finish the setup and then I'm back to the main screen. Now at this time now you'll notice the address bar at the top, it's changed to app.jetkvm which means I can do that from anywhere. And then just log back in again. And that's it. Absolutely fantastic piece of kit. Highly recommend it.